All right, pre -cal 11, so here's your e-lesson for section 2.1. We are working our way through uh, a review. So uh, this year, we're going to put 2.1 as our review for section 4, 2.1 and 2.4. So this is factoring polynomials of this form, x squared plus bx plus c. Now, you should have, now, let's just unabstract that for you, something that looks like this. Right now, you should have seen these in grade 10 and, and, and like beat them to death factoring these things. If, if you can't do this, you really need to work hard on getting this tucked under your belt fast. Because as we move into section 4, it's going to be almost taken for granted that you are pretty fluent and fluid at this process. So, these are called quadratics. Okay, that's not a highlighter. Hang on. Here we go. These are called quadratics, right? which are polynomials of degree 2. And remember, this is your degree, right? So the exponent on the x. So if you see anything that looks like this, that's a quadratic. And this is a basic quadratic. There's nothing in front of the x. There's no number there, right? So how do we get this? We get this by doing FOIL. Now, you, I'm hoping FOIL is fresh in your mind, too. Remember, FOIL is first. Really having highlighter pencil issues at the moment. And this is bugging me, so I'm erasing it. Uh, first, outside, inside, last, right? So you would multiply the x times the x, then the x times the b, and then the inside, and then the last. So you see you get x times x, b times x, a times x, a times b. So why is that important? Well, it's because the first term, right, the x squared, is the product of the first two terms in your binomials. So if you have x plus 4 and you have x plus 3. The first term x squared is the product of those. The second term, so the coefficient of the second term, so if this would be my completed quadratic, right, um, is going to be x plus or times 3, so 3x plus 4x. So it's the sum of this number and this number, but with an x. And then the last term is the product of this and this, right? Foil. So basically, this is your L, this is your, so that's your L, this is your O plus your I, and this is your F. So that's the quadratic. So when we factor it, we're doing reverse foil. So that's what we're looking for. When we have, hey, what are the odds? I actually picked the one that's right here in the example. When we have a quadratic like this, we're looking for two numbers that multiply to 12, and add to seven. So when you're first doing this, do what I've done here. List the factors, one times 12, two times six, three times four, negative one, negative 12, negative two, negative six, negative three, negative four. Because those are all the possible factors of 12. So now what you're looking for is you're looking for which of those add to seven. Well, one and 12 is 13, two and six is eight, negative one, that's negative 13, negative eight, that's negative seven. The only pair that does is three and four. And the sign matters, right? That's positive three and that's a positive four. So you literally just fill in positive three, positive four, because you know it's gonna be x something and x something because your first term is x squared. So you're just filling in these two numbers, plus 3, plus 4. They multiply to 12, they add to 7. So let's look at this one. Now, this is a bit of a piss off because it's not in the right order. So put it in the right order. x squared minus 6x, you take the sign with it, plus 8. And now we're looking for two numbers that multiply to 8 and add to negative 6. So when you get good at this, intuitively you can say, well, this is a negative number. So if I'm adding two negatives together, I'll get a negative. And this is a positive number, so my factors are going to have to be negatives. But if you're not at that point yet, list the factors of 8. 1 times 8, 2 times 4, that's it. But then negative 1, negative 8, and negative 2, negative 4. Okay, so which of those add to negative 6? No, 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 yes. So it's x minus 2, x minus 4. You're done. Now, if you have a coefficient in front of the quadratic, if you can't factor it out, then you're going to do what we're going to do in section 2.2. But if you can factor it out, and you can factor it out of each term, do that first. So you'll see a 5 as a factor of each of those. So we factor the 5 out, reverse water bomb, 
and we're left with x squared plus 7 plus 12, and then we're just solving this. And we've already done that. It's x plus 3, x plus 4. But you can't forget that the 5 is a factor as well. If you don't write the 5 in there, you don't have this as an answer. You only have this, and that's not enough. So you need the 5 as well. So here's just a step-by-step -step process. Here's another example. But you'll see the issue here. There's no number. Well, there is. What's the number in front of the x squared? It's a negative, which means it's a negative 1. So you have to factor that out, and you'll just see the signs change. So boom, 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 right? And now we're looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 6, add to negative 5. Well, negative, negative 6, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. Wait a minute. Those don't work. Positive 1, negative 6, positive 2, negative 3, 1 and negative 1 and positive 6, and negative 2 and positive 3, right? Well, which one of those add to negative 5? That adds to negative 1, that adds to positive 1, that adds to positive 5. There it is. So you'll see it's x plus 1, x minus 6, but you have to keep the negative factor out. It is also a factor, and you'll see up here as well. I didn't write it, but 5 is a factor, factor, factor. Remember, because factors are things that multiply together. So here's a super meaty example, but again, we're just factoring out the common factor. And this isn't an x squared, it's an x to the power of 4, but you'll see you have x cubed and x squared. So you can actually factor out a negative 3x uh, squared. Now, why a negative? Because I don't want my first term to be negative. So if you factor that out, you get the negative 3x squared here, and we're left with this. Now, this is a special factor, but if you, if you can't identify those quickly, it's not the end of the world. You can still do your FOIL. Two numbers that multiply to 9 and add to 6. Well, no, 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 yes. So you'll see it's x plus 3, x plus 3. So x plus 3 and x plus 3, which is x plus 3 squared. Now... Speaking of special factors, if you have a number, remember, you're looking for two numbers that multiply to this. And in this case, if those two numbers multiply and add, if 2 times 3 is 6 and 3 squared is 9, this is a perfect um, square because remember that the middle coefficient was your... Um, if you had x plus a times x plus b, the middle coefficient is a plus b times x. But if those are the same thing, it's 2 times, it, right? That would be 3 plus 3. So if you notice, basically, it's the square root of that times 2. It's a perfect square polynomial. But don't stress if you can't identify that. You can always do your FOIL. So here's a quick summary helps out. Arrange in descending order, so that's what we did where the x term wasn't before the non-x term. Um, and then this is just a little bit of bonus. If this is a positive and this is a positive, your numbers are going to be both positive. If this is a negative and this is a negative, well, you're going to need one positive number and one negative number to get that. And since this is negative, the larger number is negative. And when I say larger number, I mean the 3 is bigger than the 2 but the 3 is now negative. And then if you have a negative and a positive here, well, again, your factors, uh, in terms, one's positive, one's negative, but the bigger one's positive. And that's just stuff you get better at it the more you do. Now, what I've done here is, oh, we'll go over special factors, and then I'll show you how much practice I've provided you. So here are the special factors I was telling you about. If the last term is positive, positive, um, and this term is positive, then this is going to be positive, has to be. And if this is positive and this is negative, then this has to be negative. And then the only thing that changes is, is this 2 times the square root of this? And if it is, it's a perfect square trinomial. And you'll see, right, this is negative 4 times 2, this is negative 4 squared. This is positive 4 times 2, this is 4 squared. And that's how we get those. 
That one you're going to see sometimes, but this one you're going to see all day long. Difference of squares. This should be your jam. Okay, this is the best. And it's so straightforward because it's called, like mathematicians are just like physicists, we're not very inventive. Okay, we say exactly what it is. It's a difference of squares. Subtraction means difference. This is a perfect square. This is a perfect square. So it is a difference of squares. When you have that, it's just the square root of each one, and then plus and minus. So here, if you have x squared minus 4. Well, x squared is a perfect square, 4 is a perfect square, and we're subtracting them, so it's x plus 2, x minus 2, whatever the square root of that is. Well, because you're taking the square root of that, but in this case, it's x. You'll see in this example, though, x is a perfect square, or x squared is a perfect square, 4 is a perfect square, and 25 is a perfect square. So we can do it. It's going to be square root, square root, so 2x, 2x, square root, and then plus 5, minus 5. Difference of squares. You're going to see it all day long. Get used to it, get comfortable with it, enjoy it. Now what you've got here is an absolute ton of practice. Ton, ton, ton. Because you need to be good at this stuff. So please, please, please. Don't just do it. Make sure you understand it. What I'm going to uh, do here quickly is one of these questions for you. Because this is kind of abstract on your brain. What are the values of B that allow this to be a, um, uh, a factorable trinomial? So remember, what you're looking for is you're looking for two numbers that multiply to this number and then add to that. So what you need to do is you need to list the factors. You're going to have 1 and negative 6. You're going to have negative 1 and positive 6. You're going to have negative 2 and 3, and you're going to have 2 and negative 3. All of those will give you this value. So then what are the possible values of b? Well, it's just the sum of those, negative 5, positive 5, positive 1, negative 1. And those are your possible answers. If you look here, give positive and negative examples, because here you can have an infinite number, right? Because we're looking for numbers that add to 6. Well, what adds to 6? Uh, I don't know, 1 and 5? What about uh, negative, um, negative 6 and positive 12, right? Like, you, you can have anything. All of these things add to 6. Uh, 8 and negative 2, um, 2 and 4, all of those things add to 6. So then it's like, okay, what do they multiply to to get C? So here it's 5, here it's negative 72, here it's 8, and here it's negative 16. There's an infinite number of possibilities. So just come up with two positives and two negatives. Lots of practice. Get good at it. You need to be good at it for section four. Awesome.